Hello, and welcome to Hockey Nutrition 101. My name is Wendy Earlbeck. I'm a registered dietitian. So excited for the opportunity to speak with you, your athletes, parents, anyone who loves hockey and wants to be a better hockey player. This presentation is for you. Let's go ahead and dive in. If you are interested in finding out more about our resources, please check out the website. We're active on social media. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, and we're going to go through the nuts and bolts of nutrition for the ice hockey athlete. And it's really exciting because I'm from Minnesota. I love hockey. I think it's one of the most intense sports, and nutrition really does make a huge difference. So let's go ahead and dive into it. This is a great place where I learned a lot about teen athletes is Little Cedars Arena in Detroit, Michigan. And I had the opportunity to work with quite a few young uh, boys and girls and just talking about calcium, vitamin D. So just so you know, the bone building nutrients you're consuming at your age are going to make a huge difference when you get older. So make an, make an opportunity right now out of your nutrition and view it as building up your banks for the future because you're going to take from it. So we're going to talk about eating versus fueling. We're going to go into meals versus snacks, um, what you should be eating before games, what you should be eating before practice, what does balanced plate look like, really the nuts and bolts of the proper fueling, as well as opportunities to gain lean mass, recover, and just tools that you can apply immediately upon leaving today and listening to this. So a student athlete is only as strong or weak as his or her weakest link. What does that mean? Well, it's not just about nutrition. It's also about recovery, sleep, academics, and really optimizing your hydration. All things matter, right? And if you have one weak chain link, right, the whole chain is affected. So it's really important that you take advantage of every opportunity to fuel your body properly, to get proper rest, seven to nine hours, optimizing your recovery, focusing on your academics, your A student first and athlete second. So it's really, really important. So eating versus feeling, what does that mean? Well, nutrition is a tool and it's a tool that's utilized to promote short and long-term health, to prevent disease, illness, risk of injury, managing your body composition. And also keep it in mind that nutrition is not the same for all people, right? We all have different needs. We all have different goals, athletes versus non-athletes, right? You as athletes are more active than your non-active counterparts. Therefore, you require greater nutrition, greater calories. So really, really important to note that in a, a society where there's a lot of misinformation, you as athletes, especially hockey players, you have extremely high energy needs. So what does that concept really mean? So fueling for health first and athletic performance second. Understanding that calcium, vitamin D, those are extremely important nutrients, minerals, right, that you need, especially at your age, because at some point when you get um, later into life, you're going to be taking from your bone source. So it's really important right now in those bone building years that you store up calcium and vitamin D by consuming three servings of dairy, um, optimizing your leafy greens, understanding that iron, magnesium, zinc, all of these items that are found in our whole foods are very, very important to consume. And iron is one too that a lot of young girls and boys um, playing a lot of sports, really active, if they're not consuming a lot of meat, this could be one that um, really you need to understand plays a critical role in your endurance, your fatigue, your stamina. So definitely follow up with your physician. Um, if you have any questions on iron stores, uh, checking into ferritin. So just to get an understanding of where we're at from a calorie standpoint, we know that hockey is a very high energy expenditure sport. Um, Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics report that males need about three to 4,000 calories and females it's about 2,200 to 3,000. So when you're a hockey player, that can be extremely high and the Food and Nutrition Board estimates about uh, 6,000 calories. So we know on a given day, practice uh, games, right? You're going to need a lot of carbohydrates, a lot of calories, because you could burn through this on just a given day. And then you factor in showcases, additional tournaments, and you're looking at um, close to 8,000 calories in some cases, right? If Especially if you're incredibly lean, you're trying to gain muscle, gain uh, lean mass. So what's, I asked this question when I'm delivering this live, is what's the most important source of energy that you need as a hockey player? A lot of people think it's protein. A lot of people think that uh, multivitamins or even water gives you the energy. But the fact of the matter is we need carbohydrates. Those 
carbohydrates fuel muscle and brain. That is our body's primary fuel substrate. And anyone who tells you any different um, doesn't fully understand your sports demands or your needs as a young or even collegiate athlete. So here's a, a basic plate that it really gives you a good guide of whole, you know whole grains, carbohydrates, the high energy source, fruits and vegetables, color right, reducing inflammation, having your lean protein source on there. And really this is the nuts and bolts of what your plate should look like. And we're gonna talk more about that today. So macros, everybody knows what macros are. Everybody is hearing this, you know, trendy, do you count your macros? And I know even some of my nine-year-old athletes are counting macros, even hockey players. So I just want to go through this, that macronutrients, short, uh, long for macros, right? Fats, carbohydrates, and protein. So carbs offer, as you had learned, brain and muscle fuel, protein, repairs, uh, rebuilds, and supports satiety. Fat is obviously important for hormone regulation. It supports satiety, it adds flavor. So if you are trying to gain weight, for example, adding healthy fat to your vegetables, to your proteins, avocado oil, um, using any coconut oil, if you wish, I don't demonize fats. There's a lot of misinformation out there, but what I would recommend is focusing on your olive oil, your avocado, uh, nut and seed oils. Um, they can be very beneficial and very helpful. So if you have questions about that, we absolutely can work with you on a one-on-one -on -one or group basis. So here are just some general recommendations for macronutrients, right? So hockey players are really going to fall into that intense training. So you're really going to be looking at greater carbohydrate and protein needs as well as fat. So like I had said, right, we could go up to 6,000 calories per day. So this is just a general guide. So if you have more questions about this, highly recommend booking a one-on-one -on -one with me or Coach Sydney to talk more about what your needs are. So. As you had learned, carbohydrates are the most important energy source for hockey players. It affects your mood, your concentration, uh, your bone mineral density, muscle, and your strength, your power, your speed, stamina, all those things play a role, right? So if you have inadequate carbohydrates, that is going to cause a decline in your power, your, your skating ability, your speed on the ice, you're not going to be able to keep up. And that's going to be really difficult, right? Because you're training at a high level. So um, carbs are one of the most controllable things that you can put in your body, right? Carbs, water, sleep, those things are all controllable. So I really hit the hammer on the head when I say athletes, listen up, this is a controllable. You can optimize your performance by fueling up with the appropriate amount of carbohydrates every single day and not skimping on them. Because when you do deplete your glycogen, which is the storage form of carbohydrates, right? That causes a reduction in your energy levels, uh, focus, concentration. So Think of your body as this, you know, it's a hydro flask. We want to hydrate, of course. So it's a good reminder to drink water, but you have a fuel tank here. And as we're sleeping at night, we break that down to maintain homeostasis in the body. But then also, right, during training, um, being a young adolescent athlete that's growing and developing, we deplete this quite quickly. So it's really, really important that you fill this up as quickly and efficiently as possible, not only around training, but when you wake up in the morning, breakfast is very important. Just think of your body that even right now we're expending calories, we're expending energy, and you expend significantly more when you're on the ice, when you're in the weight room. Um, Multi-sport athletes, especially many of you play more sports than just hockey. So um, really, really important to make sure that you're fueling up with carbohydrates. Protein is obviously very important. I get the question all the time, Coach Wendy, what's a good source of protein that I should have at breakfast, lunch? What about after practice? What about after games? So fundamentally, we want to focus on leucine rich sources. Leucine is a branched chain amino acid. Um, leucine, isoleucine, and valine. Those are the three BCAs uh, that you often hear about. So we want to consume them in whole food sources instead of a supplement. So chicken, beef, turkey, eggs, plank steak, again, going with the lean source, our deli turkey, if you're plant-based, you can do lentils, you can do tofu, um, also shrimp. Obviously seafood is great, but dairy, eggs, uh, beef, really rich sources of leucine. Of course, our Greek yogurt, there's a 25 gram per serving option. And then you can add some powdered nut butter to that to beef it up to 30 grams. Fantastic source, tasty uh, grab and go option as well. 
Carbohydrates also, again, as you learn, fuel, muscle, and brain, they are your energy. They're not the enemy. There's a lot of charlatans out there that promote low carbohydrate diets. And the fact of the matter is you have to be very mindful and filter the information that you hear. So technically, fruits, vegetables, they contain carbohydrates. So they could be considered a carb. Um, but our bread, rice, tortilla, grains, things like that, those are going to be a, a greater source of carbohydrates that you do want to utilize. Ezekiel bread is fantastic. It's a um, higher protein bread, but all breads are fantastic in the sense that they're whole grain. They can provide you with the carbs that you need. English muffins, granola is a great option to have around training, if you, especially if you need a quick grab and go option um, because it's quick sugar. It's going to break down very efficiently. So is fruit. But I just want to give you the example that carbohydrates are found in a lot of the you know fruits and vegetables that you may not know. So they can still count towards your carbohydrate needs. Breakfast. So this is a common one, right, for hockey players of like, well, we have early morning skate. We have a lot going on throughout the day, especially during showcases. How do I maximize my nutrition at breakfast? Well, here are some great grab and go options. It's fruit smoothies where you can add some protein powder. You can add Greek yogurt, Fairlife milk. Um, again, we want to try and shoot for two hours out at a minimum. And I have a four to one strategy that I'll talk about more in the upcoming slides. But we always want to have something. Something is better than nothing, especially if you most hockey players, you guys have evening games. Um, so it's really important that we get on our high protein uh, balanced breakfast as quickly as possible. And a lot of my hockey players, both boys and girls, we do two breakfasts. In fact, all athletes should do two breakfasts. So however you can sustainably create a routine around may send our oats, Greek yogurt and fruit, a core power in fruit, maybe some peanut butter toast with some eggs, salmon, egg omelet, you can prepare that in advance. These are really great options. The, the fact of the matter is athletes, coaches, anyone who listens to this is we want to create consistency in our routine because as you learned, you deplete this fuel, right? Your body, your glycogen stores at night. So if you walk into practice or you try and start your day without any fuel, you're going to quickly see fatigue, declines in your strength, your energy. It puts you at a greater risk for injury and illness. So this is really important. Here's one of my athletes. He's amazing. He understood how important it was to build a plate. So here on the whiteboard in my office, we built the whole grain, the carbohydrate, the fruit, the vegetable, which we had talked about before. Breakfast is a non-negotiable and nutrients missed at breakfast are often not made up later throughout the day. And this is proven in the literature. And also consuming breakfast decreases your risk of injuries because of the nutrition composition, right? So as I talked about, vitamin D, calcium. The reason why dairy would be a good choice, the yogurt, not only is it quick, you don't have to cook it, but it's rich in key vitamins and minerals that your body needs, as well as protein. And you can add fruit in it for carbohydrates. Pair that with a slice of toast, you're out the door. But the fact of the matter is breakfast is a controllable, right? And we want to control our controllables. And we know, right, that if we eat that breakfast, we're going to have better concentration, cognition. Um, everything is going to improve because Food gives us energy. Energy allows us to go stronger, uh, longer, and, and be faster. Because again, when you're training at a high level, you need that greater nutrition. So we want to optimize those performance adaptations. And what you'll find is that a lot of the athletes that we work with in comparison to their peers is their peers are not eating breakfast. Their peers are skipping meals and our athletes are eating breakfast. They're powering up with protein. They're getting something in the tank. And what they're finding is that they can go longer. They can are they can be stronger than their peers and, and, it's, and they're doing the same workout. But the difference is they're getting seven to nine hours of sleep. They're eating breakfast. They're hydrating. They're controlling their control bowls. And here are some options as we navigate inflation, right? It's 2022 and we know things are very expensive, but this is a very simple way to fuel up with low cost foods that's going to offer you high quality nutrition, whole grain wraps, pita, bagels, pretzel rods, oatmeal, uh, whole grain pasta, rice, burritos. Those are fantastic options. Again, your hockey players, you're going to be expending about 6,000 calories a day often, right? When you are training uh, between practices, games, showcases, packing these items, string cheese, yogurt, chocolate milk, uh, peanut butter. I put it in the kind of option because peanut butter technically is a fat, but it contains protein. It's not a complete protein, but a lot of people do um, want a boost of protein. So it's a healthy fat, but it can add to your protein uh, source. So what I would recommend with the peanut butter is doing a peanut butter egg sandwich, right? Because the eggs are 
are going to contain the protein. Uh, cottage cheese, you can buy that in bulk. Fresh and frozen uh, fruits and veggies, whatever you can find on sale is going to be your best option. S peruse through buying in bulk. Costco, uh, Kroger, Aldi, wherever your grocery store is located, buy in bulk. All right, so here's just a quick sample of what it would look like if you were to lay out a fueling program, and a lot of athletes don't know how little they're eating until they, they actually lay it down, right? We don't know what we don't know. So really important to identify your schedule. I have a lot of athletes that, you know, come to us when they're injured. So this is an example of someone who is, you know, going through a rehabilitation program. They're working on getting back to being stronger, faster, healthier, all the things that we want as athletes, right? So here's something just to keep in mind of, a breakfast, a second breakfast, a snack, lunch, additional snacks. There is no perfect way of eating, but I would highly recommend getting some sort of structure, tracking in my fitness pal, finding some way to help you understand and audit how many you know calories you're eating, how much protein, carbohydrates are you meeting your micronutrient needs. And that's really, really important to do only, not only on a weekend day, but during the week as well. So additional snack items, Hockey players, right? We're grab and go. We're busy. These are some good options. RX protein bars, uh, protein muffin cups, the honey bagel egg. Uh, you'll see in the right hand corner here, hard boiled eggs, turkey sandwiches, applesauce packets, dried fruit. Dried fruit is a great option when you're about to go state. You don't have a lot of time to eat something that's quick sugar. Not when we're sitting around playing video games or on social media studying. Uh, dried fruit is just quick carbohydrates. So that's important note. String cheese, fresh fruit, chocolate milk. Um, and then if you go over to the left here, those breakfast options, again, that we were talking about, mason jar oats, putting together, you know, six mason jar oats, maybe some smoothie bags with your chia, flax, protein powder, third party tested, of course, and then having your tubs of yogurt, your fruit around the Kodiak cake muffin cups, you know, planning out so that you have at least five to six days out of the week accounted for some meals and snacks. That's really, really important. Bananas literally are one of the best things you can do for breakfast. Um, just because they're simple, they're going to offer you at least 22 grams of carbs. And um, um, they're quite tasty, offering you some potassium, which is also important for muscle contraction. And this is important too. So there's a lot of influencers out there. Uh, there's a lot of uh, misinformation. So I, I really want you to know that if you're experiencing any types of uh, concerns, not only if you're a coach or if you're an athlete, you're feeling tired, your legs just never seem to recover. You have a reduction in speed, power, strength, you're losing weight. Um, if you're a female, you're missing your periods or having a mood change um, that you just really can't understand why. I really want you to reach out to a dietitian, myself, Coach Sydney, who is with us, or someone in your area. You can actually go to the Academy of Nutrition and you can search a dietitian in your area. It's one of the most important things that you'll ever do as an athlete is recognizing when your fuel is um, not enough and then how to bridge that gap. Because if you chronically under fuel, you're going to have hormone imbalances. You're going to have reductions in bone mineral density. It can affect your fertility in the future. Um, I know that you know teen athletes or even college athletes are not necessarily thinking about the road and what's next, but I really do want you to understand that if you're an athlete, you're not going to be an athlete forever, right? And that's that's something that's hard for you to understand right now, but I do want you to think in terms of the, the long haul, right? And, and the food choices you're making, what you're doing right now will affect the long term. So if you want to play as long as possible, I really want you to understand how important it is to get help if you need it, to reach out and make sure you're fueling up properly. Because if you are going to play juniors, you want to play at the next level and you don't take care of yourself now, um, your body, it, it just won't hold up. And then you'll be injured and you'll be unable to play. And then plus we're looking at diseases and a surplus of other things. So that's where I say, please reach out to the expert. All right, so here's that plate more in greater detail. This is a very simple rule of thumb athletes. 25 to 30 grams of protein per meal. Um, if you're a girl, if you're a boy, 30 to 40 grams, 10 to 15 grams at snack. Um, and that's just a range, right? Because a lot of athletes we work with are not really consistently eating meals. So this is just a good place to start, right? And if you've read the book, Atomic Habits, you understand that building a new habit is hard, um, especially if we're trying to do too much too quick. It can it can become overwhelming. So start with that mentality of 1% improvement every single day. And what that looks like is this right here, breakfast, 
lunch, dinner, snacks in between. These are my target goals. Um, and you know now what 30 grams of protein looks like. What does 15 grams of carbs look like? We can multiply that, you know, by five to 10 to get us to where we need to be. So this is really important. Half the plate being whole grain, fruits and vegetables, lean protein at a very minimum 20 grams. You don't want to skimp on your protein. And if you are plant-based, you can do soy, um, you can do your tofu, you can do your legumes. You just have to understand athletes, coaches, anyone watching this, that you are not getting the same uh, amount of leucine per serving that you would in animal protein. So I just want to be very clear about that. It's not that um, it's impossible to meet your protein needs. It's just that we need greater leucine to stimulate muscle protein synthesis. And as you had learned, leucine is that number one um, driver for muscle protein synthesis. And that's proven in the literature. If you look up um, any of the studies published in the Journal of American Nutrition, the International Society of Sports Nutrition, you'll find that that is true. The position stand papers speak for themselves. All right. So here's a example of a typical fueling guide here, right? Talk about the two breakfasts the breakfast uh, options, right? And however you wanna space those out. And we're gonna talk about fueling 421, that chew nibble sip on nutrient timing. But you wanna see how this is spaced out, right? Because for recovery, uh, muscle protein synthesis, growth, training, we want balanced meals throughout the day. We want balanced snacks because we wanna prevent our blood sugar from rising and dipping too quickly, which is what actually drives fatigue. So this is very important to understand that there is no one size fits all. But if we take a look at this chart and we say, all right, where's my practice at? Where's the game? How can I identify the areas where I need to fuel up and ensure that I'm getting the appropriate nutrition? Dehydration is one of the most controllable things you can do. Um, and athletes often fail to hydrate properly. And it leads to muscle cramping, declines in speed, strength, power, recovery. You get headaches. You get uh sensitive to, you know, light, um, and you just don't feel well, it's really hard to focus. It's hard to be your best in the weight room or in the classroom when you don't have your focus on point. Right. So speaking of focus, let's drink some water. All right. So water transports nutrients throughout the body. It lubricates our joints and tissues. And when you experience dehydration of even one to 2% of our body weight, you're going to see a drop in performance. It's going to affect your body's ability to cool yourself, regulate your temperature, uh, circulation. And obviously that's problematic, right? Because if we're sweating a lot, we're doing a lot of training, we want our body to cool itself properly. So here's a great uh, example. Please look at, you know, look at your urine and check out the color of it, ensuring that it's more of that light uh, clear because that's properly hydrated. But you do also have to understand that um, our hydration is not just affected by our water intake, it's also, right, our minerals. So drip drop, uh, LMNT packets, body armor, these are items that, you know, products that can support hydration, the minerals, the sodium, potassium, right, magnesium, the minerals that our body needs in order to sufficiently perform at our best. Especially if you're depleting your heavy sweater and you know that, heavy sweater because you have a crust on your shirt, your jersey. That's how you know you're a heavy sweater. And I highly recommend uh, using a drip drop, using some sort of electrolyte when you're training. Not when you're sitting on the couch playing video games or on social media. Um, and just like our protein supplements, our creatine monohydrate supplements, any of those items, they do need to be third-party tested, NSF approved, work with your sports med staff or download the free app to ensure that it is third-party tested. It's free of any banned substances because that can affect your uh, body, right? If there was rat poison or some sort of harmful ingredient that was laced in that item, because I could go in my garage and create a supplement and sell it on the market today. Um, and until you know the FDA can prove that there's been harm, it won't be pulled, right? So be mindful when you're walking into GNC, they're gonna sell you caffeine, um, they're gonna sell you a bunch of supplements that you, you don't need, right? Food first, we get our energy from food in the form of fats, carbs, and proteins that you learned before. So it's really, really important to be mindful of what you're putting in your body, make sure that it's third party tested, even professional athletes, right? If they have a banned substance found in their system from uh, drug testing, and they didn't know it because they didn't get a third party tested supplement. Um, that's one of the, the biggest challenges, right? Because we know better, we have the app, we have the ability to look it up. So we should, and that's why it's so important to be very careful and cautious of what you're utilizing. 
So let's talk a little bit about the night before the game. What should you be eating? Everyone asks me, Wendy, what's the best meal to have before a game? And what I would say, right, is all meals matter. There's no magical meal that's going to be the best to support your athletic performance. We never want to try new foods on game day. We really want to build a good routine. So I ask you this question. What does your routine look like? Are you getting into bed early in the days leading up to your game? Are you ensuring that you're eating breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks? Are you also prioritizing your protein, carbohydrates um, at meals, right? Throughout the week leading up to that night before game day. So here are some quick tips because many people want the flashy, you know, special uh, meal. But the fact of the matter is go with what works, right? Obviously a, a good high quality protein. We could do grilled chicken, whole grain pasta, a reasonable portion of it, right? We don't want to carb load or anything crazy because we've already been fueling up to that event, right? We don't need to do anything different because it could, in the right here, make you sick, right? No new foods, because if you do a new food, your body might not respond well to it and that'll make you sick. And then also we have uh, fried foods, high fat foods. We don't want to have those the night before because not only will it cause inflammation, it will decrease our ability to actually break that down and absorb it. Um, and I know a lot of people are like, oh, it doesn't matter. It 100% does matter what you eat. Um, you know, limiting fried foods in general, because they do cause inflammation in the body, and that's not a good inflammation. It can also prevent your ability from recovering. Um, and just keeping in mind that we want to focus on lean protein, whole grains, right? A good source of carbohydrates that you're used to. Sweet potatoes are awesome. I have more information on the website as well if you want to check out some meals, but practice your game day or evening before game day meal out in advance. And then having a pre-sleep snack of cottage cheese, which is rich in casein protein, which helps with muscle recovery. It's a slow digesting dairy protein versus your whey protein is a fast digesting. Um, and then of course, pineapple or banana, some sort of fruit tart cherries are great too. They're going to support melatonin production. And that's what we want, right? It's quality sleep because we want to feel our best waking up on game day seven to nine hours of sleep at a minimum. I do recommend, according to the National Sleep Foundation, young athletes need about eight to 11 hours, right? Think about it this way. You're growing and developing a body, you're training at a very high level, and you're taking a lot of hits. It's very, you know, high contact, intense sport, and you need additional sleep. So seven to nine hours is bare minimum. If you can get eight to 11, you're going to be in better shape. So let's talk about that nutrient timing, that four to one that I talk so much about. So the goal of nutrient timing is that there's no solid food in your stomach or at training or game time. You want to ensure, right, that you have proper absorption and delivery of the fuel in fluid at the right time for energy, proper absorption and delivery of carbohydrates, fluid, and protein at the right time. That's really what nutrient timing is. It, it's really misunderstood because it's something that you want to ensure uh, that you're able to access that fuel um, and have it access it rather, right? Be able to break it down, digest it and absorb. We are not what we eat. We are what we absorb. Okay. So it's really, really important to understand. So two nibble sip, and that's going to be in my performance nutrition playbook that is coming out. Um, but here are some options, right? So this would technically be skate fast, eat slow, right? We want to have this about two hours out, right? Think protein and carbohydrates, string cheese, grapes, turkey sandwich, about two hours out with course, our fluid, uh, 16 to 24 ounces, hard boiled eggs, tangerine. Again, you want to think in terms of if it's before a game, no new foods. We want to practice those foods outside of game day. You really want to focus on having the items that you know are going to work well for you. We all have something that we just uh, feel best with, right? So as a former college softball player, I loved grapes, and a half a turkey sandwich. That was my jam. That worked for me. That was my pregame meal. I knew it was going to be golden. I'd be on the mound. I'd be happy with it. So find what works well for you. And that's a routine, right? We all, we all have some ritual before our games. And that's also psychology. That gives us the confidence to go in there and not only have fun, but feel good about what we ate and not worry about, oh, is this going to feel you know, will I be able to digest this? Will this bother my tummy? You know, never having spicy foods either uh, before games or practices is really, really important. 
So four hours out. So that's eating a full meal, grilled chicken sandwich, side of pretzels, half a cup of Greek yogurt, pear. Again, think that real food, that whole plate, the fruit, the vegetable, the lean protein and the whole grain and that side of dairy, turkey spinach wrap. These can also be great items for you to check out and try for game day, right? Watermelon fruit slices are super hydrating. I really like you to you know have those because the color antioxidants that offers your body what it needs to reduce muscle soreness. But four hours out, right? Think four, two. Two hours out, we've talked about this with the options. Um, two hours out is really that nibble, right? We don't want a ton of food in our system. We want that fuel that is gonna break down uh, pretty quickly. Again, we have about 90 minutes and your body's going to be different than someone else. Sometimes I have athletes that can literally eat a banana and then go run up and down the soccer field or basketball court or skate down the ice. So you have to test out what works well for you. Fruit tends to do pretty well, but I do, again, here are options. Check them out. Applesauce and eggs, turkey sandwich, protein muffin cup, Greek yogurt and fruit. Find something that works well for you and stick with it and plan ahead. All right, so getting into the next items, the nibble, sip. Part, right. So we just talked about two hours out nibbling on Greek yogurt, but in RX bar, the goal is to have a little bit of protein and carbohydrates a few hours out so that again, our body can break that down and digest it and absorb it so that we can transfer it into fuel uh, for us to use. Right. And that can support muscle contraction. And then one hour out is sipping, strict slipping on liquids, your tart cherry juice, because it has sugar in it, right? Carbohydrates, electrolyte drinks, sports drinks. You do not want solid food in your stomach about 30 to uh, 60 minutes out. And like I said, some athletes, you might be able to eat a banana and, and go in your set for a training, um, for conditioning, whatever it is, you have to identify that. So I just want to be very clear that we don't want the blood flow going to our stomach. We want the blood flow going to our muscles, our extremities, for that training, right? And and that's why it's so important that it's just liquid because we want to be able to break it down and use it for fuel. So blood flow going to our brain and our muscles instead of our stomach, really important to designate. And then what about during the games, right? What about between periods? So these are options to refuel with, right? Fuel up to avoid stalling out graham crackers, right? We want quick sugar. We want liquid. We want that granola bar I talked about, applesauce packets, fruit slices, grapes, oranges, watermelon. Bring this stuff with you and all my athletes. Um, I've gotten some of the athletic trainers. We, I've, I've helped build fueling stations. I worked at the University of Wisconsin Stout during my master's with our uh, program, our hockey program. And the guys absolutely loved the fruit, the Gatorade. They even did, whoops, they even did chocolate milk. Um, I wouldn't recommend that. I would stick with more so straight up carbs. Um, and, and if you're able to, again, limit fat as much as possible, you want to avoid it as, as much as possible as in don't have it. So highly recommend doing the pretzels, very cheap pretzel rods are extremely, extremely low cost. Uh, cherries are fantastic as well. We know there's so much literature to support the reduction in muscle soreness. So highly recommend those options. So fighting off injury and supporting recovery is always our top of mind. So here are some options, right? You want to practice the four R's for recovery to replenish, repair, reinforce, and rehydrate. So think about those with our fluid, right? Uh, that's why I highly recommend chocolate milk after training because it contains protein, electrolytes, carbohydrates, all the items that are required, that three to one carbohydrate to protein ratio that has been proven in the literature to support recovery. And, and that's very consistent. So reinforcing your immune system as well with antioxidants, cherries, berries, pineapple, papaya, papaya actually has NSAID-like effects. It can reduce muscle soreness um, and it can prevent muscle breakdown. And that's pretty cool. Spinach, collard greens, sweet potato, all these items that are very nutrient rich right? Fruits and vegetables are powerful. And if you don't love the taste of them, throw them in a smoothie. That's a really great way to have a recovery beverage and throw in your Greek yogurt, your chocolate milk, um, and you're set to go. And of course, we want to make sure we repair uh, and regenerate that muscle that's been broken down with the appropriate amount of protein, reaching for those leucine rich sources, right? The eggs, dairy, any type of dairy, Greek yogurt, chocolate milk, whey protein, make sure it's third-party tested. Bipro is a great option. You can also do diametize, 
we muscle milk third party test it. You just wanna make sure that it's been, and here's Bipro here in the top right hand corner here uh, for our recovery pairings. And I have this little rule of thumb that we consume 20, a minimum of 25 grams of protein paired with 50 grams of carbohydrates within 30 minutes of training. So it's that 25, 50, 30 rule, right? And that's a really simple way, just like the four, two, one, the two nibble sip to help you remember, all right, Wendy talked about nutrient timing. She said, these are the foods we should eat four hours out, two hours out, one hour out, two nibble sip. And then of course the 25, 50, 30 rule, 25 grams of protein minimum paired with 50 grams of carbohydrates within 30 minutes. So here are some options to achieve that. The yogurt and fruit, you can do a whey protein smoothie, banana and chocolate milk, bagel, egg, cheese, sandwich with deli turkey. Um, it's really great. And of course, muscle soreness is a thing, right? You feel sore, multiple training sessions, showcases, pomegranate, beets, starchy vegetables like sweet potato, watermelon, har omegas, right? The sardine, salmon, fatty fish, tart cherries, tart cherry juice. These are all items that can reduce muscle soreness. Highly recommend bringing this with you to travel with. Um, beets are pretty interesting, right? Because you can actually bake these in the oven and roast them and they can become delicious chips. And that's a much better choice. And you can even salt them to get in a little bit more sodium too. So awesome. Now, I know a lot of athletes are always trying to gain weight and trying to gain the, the right weight. And I've been working with quite a few hockey players um, in Minnesota, Michigan, California, um, who are trying to gain about 10 to 15 pounds. And we've been really plugging away and they've understood that in order to gain weight, we've got to add about three to 500 calories every single day for an average of about one pound or two pounds, depending on how motivated they are and able to really be consistent. These are some high calorie options. Adding in whole fat dairy, peanut butter and jellies, um, doing peanut butter oats, right? Those mason jar oats can be 800 calories. If you add some honey, maple syrup, bagel, egg, cheese sandwich with kiwi slices, just like some of those recovery items. The biggest thing, right, is that we're just adding more calories and you want to be mindful, right, of what you're eating around training. So that's why I love, you know, chunky monkey smoothies when I have where you can blend up oatmeal, banana, chocolate milk, yogurt, and throwing that into a, a blender and you can have half in the morning and half in the afternoon. You're looking at 900 calories added to your day. And then obviously your whole fat dairy, great choice. Fueling station. This is also something that I get a lot of questions on. And that fueling station can look exactly like uh, the between periods, right? Your protein and carbs. And these are the same items that I talk about, you know, the pretzel rods, the bagel, the orange watermelon slices, grapes, bananas, sports drinks. If you want to do gels, hundred percent fruit bar, whatever your prerogative is based on your budget, these are the basic things that can meet pretty much any budget. And like I said, I was at a D3 school. I was also at the University of Florida. I saw the amount of money that they had for their programs. This um, fueling station snacks on a budget is something that I had developed over the years working with uh, programs at the high school and collegiate level that did not have a lot of money. And what's really nifty, right, is the fact that Chocolate milk is one of the cheapest things. If you buy Trumu, a large one, um, you can pour that into cups. You can help your athletes out um, in offering that. So something is always better than nothing. It's not being about, it's not about being perfect. It's about being consistent. Consistency over intensity. And let's talk very briefly about creatine monohydrate. So I have blogs on my website, nutritionwithwendy.com. Wendy with an I, of course. I stand by this. Creatine monohydrate is one of the most well-studied supplements that is not only safe, it's effective, and it's beneficial. There has been zero reported adverse effects in the teen athlete or even young population. Creatine monohydrate is not a steroid, right? Creatine is made up of arginine, glycine, and methionine. Um, and, and the fact of the matter is, it's not a steroid. So I want to be very clear about that because there is a lot of physicians, a lot of misinformation uh, because creatine has been proven to be so beneficial for recovery, injury prevention, brain health, optimizing performance, recovery, that it has steroid-like effects and properties because it's that um, it's that beneficial, but it's not a steroid, right? And we know that because it's literally amino acids. Um, 
it is safe, it's effective. You wanna use it post-workout with a carbohydrate source. And I have that here, the guidance on it. It's best absorbed with carbs when they're present, right? Using that in Greek yogurt, fruit, chocolate milk, you can blend it up in a smoothie. There's no need to load or be ridiculous with it. Just start using it three to five grams after a weight training session. You can even use it on rest days. Everybody should be using creatine. It's literally like the Swiss army knife of supplements. It can be used for anybody. It's been also proven in the clinical population because of its ability to reduce um, soreness, help with recovery, reduce inflammation, because it recycles ATP, which we know is the cell's energy currency, right? So it's not a steroid. It will not make you bulky. It will not make you big. It will not make you gain weight. It will help you retain fluid, yes, necessary, that's required for gaining lean mass, just like carbohydrates. They draw water into the cell. That is the physiological process that occurs. So if any charlatan misinforms you on that, please send them to the blog, send them to our page. Um, I'm, I'm very vocal about this. Make sure that it's third-party tested, clean with a K, Thorn, BioSteel, um, NOW Sports, um, mementos. These are all great options. Again, use that third-party tested app to ensure that it is um, safe, effective. Um, it's been, of course, it's safe and effective, excuse me, ensure that it's been um, third-party tested. As I had mentioned before, our supplements are not as heavily regulated as our pharmaceuticals. So it's very, very important to ensure that it is third-party tested. It's free of any banned substances. So you don't have some um, Yahoo from you know, GNC or some supplement company giving you something that actually doesn't contain what it says on the label, and it could have something harmful in it. Those are wrapping up. These are basic tips, right? We talked about two breakfasts, hydration, you want to wake up and drink water. We know fundamentally you need about 80 to 100 ounces of fluid every single day. I would recommend 120. Body weight plays a key role in that, but eating something every couple of hours to prevent nutrient deficiencies, using that 4 2 one to fuel up for training and competitions, using the 25-50-30 rule, right? Uh, within 20, excuse me, consume 25 grams of protein paired with 50 grams of carbohydrates within 30 minutes to reduce muscle breakdown. And no, the post-workout meal is not the most important meal. Just like breakfast isn't the most important meal. All meals matter. All meals matter. There's no magical meals. It's about being consistent. And that's really what builds a championship athlete, right? What are you willing to do that others aren't willing to do? A lot of athletes are not willing to go to bed early. They're not willing to get their proper sleep to recover. Uh, they blame other people, right? Just because they are exhausted from scrolling social media the night before, then they miss breakfast. So you are 100% controlling your habits. Um, as someone who was younger once, your age, um, I didn't do the right things. And that's why I'm so passionate right now about getting this information out and ensuring that you are fueling up, you're powering up so that you're not stalling out. Here's your portable pantry athletes, hard boiled eggs, whey protein, jerky, pea protein if you're plant-based, Greek yogurt, string cheese, tuna, salmon, chicken packets, Kodia cake power cups, healthy fats, nuts, seeds, nut butter, pouches uh, that can, you know, the, whether it be the soy butter, sunflower seed butter, almond butter, peanut butter, any of those pouches that are grab and go are really awesome because you can add those to fruit. Trail mix, you can make your own trail mix. Save money that way, right? Buy in bulk. Edamame, guacamole packets, carbohydrates, right? Pretzels, fruit, applesauce packets, oats, pitas, our rice cups. Of course, we want to go with brown rice. Um, hydration, we talked about the LMNT packets, drip drop, sports drinks, bottled water, shelf stable chocolate milks, the core power. Obviously, you know, fruits and vegetables fall in here, bringing your apple, orange, pear, any orange slices that you feel compelled um, to pair with a delicious carb boiled egg. I highly recommend it. It's just something about the citrus that's really good. So those are options. And we can't talk about being an optimal, you know, athlete without sleep. Sleep is one of the most important things. Sleep is king and nutrition is queen. So athletes that sleep less than eight hours are 1.7 times more likely to be injured and this is pretty, um, this is pretty intense, right? Because if we think about it, there's reports of athletes, teens, just teens in general, are getting less than five hours in some cases. And if you think about it too, right? As an athlete, you need that, I said, eight to 11 hours, according to the National Sleep Foundation. So it's so important that you establish a sleep routine, limit screens before bed, avoid using those electronics, make sure 
that you get proper sleep because without proper sleep, we see a reduction in testosterone. We have a greater risk for injury. We see declines in our strength, speed, and power, which are all pretty important things, right? If you want to be a great hockey player. So just to reiterate, this is Ian. He's one of my athletes in Minnesota, great hockey player. Um, he has gained a solid 12 pounds since we started working together. He made his own homemade trail mix here. He's awesome. Ian agrees eating two breakfasts eating your meals before and after games, bringing stuff with you for conditioning. He packs the tart cherry juice. He brings his fruit. Uh, he does the 25, 50, 30 rule. He balances his meals. He does his protein shakes, protein smoothies. Ian has taken advantage of the controllables, nutrition, his sleep. And he gives the two thumbs up because he feels really good. And he wants to share that with um, everyone else. So I will leave you with this. Nutrition is your secret weapon. It can make you good or great. And the choice is really up to you. What are you willing to do to outcompete others, right? Because when you get to the next level, it doesn't matter because everybody's good. But what are you willing to do that others aren't willing to do? Others want to do pre-workout when you know you've learned in this presentation that pre-workout does not give you the fuel and energy that your body needs, nor will it give you the best to build up your bone banks or be a healthy person long term. So I really hope you enjoyed today's presentation and I hope that you'll reach out, you'll follow us. If you have any questions about gaining weight, about additional items to eat before and after training, um, what are some good anti-inflammatory foods, we are here to help and we are so blessed and honored that you you invested with us nutrition with Wendy where it's a we thing we together accomplish your goals so just control your controllables and make sure that you focus on being the best athlete and person that you can be thank you all so much and have a very blessed day and good luck